Trash, Chapter 5 Gardo here, and I'd take the story on from Raphael. We agreed to split the story because some things he forgets, like he wanted to go to the station that night, right then, and then the next day like a little kid. He got so excited thinking about what he might find. I had to say no about ten times, because one thing I knew was that we had to be there in Bahala for the big search, especially if the policeman who talked to us was there. I had to get a hold of his hair, and I said, How is it going to look when everyone is there to earn money, and the boy they know found something, maybe a shoe or maybe something else, doesn't show up? Raphael was my best friend, but he's like a kid, always laughing, playing, thinking everything's funny, thinking it's a game. So I said they have to see us working and looking, and that way maybe they leave us alone. And so we waited. Next morning, like I said, the whole of Bahala turns out, early and ready, before dawn, like Raphael said. We get money for what we can sell, hand to mouth, so getting paid for the day is like a dream. And there were way too many pickers. I guess people had told people, and there were crowds of us, all piling in. Then the police arrived early also, and even as the sun came up, everyone was way up on the trash. Men, women, and every damn kid, even the tiny ones, earning their precious hundred, some without even hooks, just using hands, and in fact, there were so many of us, it was dangerous, and you could feel the trash sliding about, and there was no room to throw the stuff you'd sorted. I was hooking stuff up, scratching other people almost, and it was more and more dangerous, so after one hour, all us kids were ordered off, and just the men stayed on, and the trash was being gone through again, right by where we'd been the previous day. The managers were there talking to the police, shouting up to the men, and it was all being picked over and over again and again, but nothing was coming up. All the while, more cars. Police car, then another police car, then a police truck, motorbikes, more police cars, and then big cars like government cars, and men in suits as well as police, getting out in their nice shoes, getting wet and filthy, and it's still not 7 o'clock and you can't move for the cars and people like it's a festival. No belts were working as they turned them all off. Things get worse. Soon we can see the line of trucks coming in is stretching right back through the gates and down the road, waiting to unload. After just one hour, I'd counted 26. The drivers didn't even care at first. They squatted in the shade, and some boys went off to get them tea and cigarettes. There were kids jumping into the trucks then and picking there on the roadside, but me and Raphael stayed down listening around for more information. Me, wondering all the time where this was going to end. Knowing, because I knew, that people were going to be angry soon and it would be these police losing patience first. When the police get mean, you don't want to be around. On the other hand, I did not want Raphael hiding and drawing attention that way, so that was why I kept him right in the middle of it. One man had a box with a great wad of notes in it, and he'd shown it around to prove we'd all be paid. I overheard another one talking, and I worked out what was happening. They were using their brains. Somehow they knew the bag had been lost in this place called McKinley, which is a rich area, so it wasn't hard to trace the trucks that look after that neighborhood. Now the McKinley trucks had made one visit yesterday, which is how we found what we found, and more were coming in again today. So for today's trucks, all the police had to do was get them to drop the loads on a clear patch of ground, and we could pick over it easy in an hour. Sure enough, just before noon, they brought up the three special McKinley trucks, and they dropped their loads, and they kept us all back, so we were all just looking at it. I said to Raphael then, turning him around so no one saw, Are you still sure, friend? He was looking scared because I think he was just beginning to realize how big this must be. He said very soft, I'm more sure than ever, Gardo, so I stayed close. We tried not to look just... We tried to look just happy and excited then, because the last thing I wanted was for anyone to think we were suspicious or scared or worried or hiding something. But I was frightened too, and I grabbed Raphael and made sure we joined in the pushing and shoving, like we hadn't a care in the world. When we saw Rat, we waved. He was squatting close by, smoking, and he would look over at me sometimes, but nobody looked at him, because Rat is a is as gray as trash, and he has only the clothes he wears, which are so filthy he can move around and no one sees him. After a while, the police gathered all us kids together and got us working. They got extra hooks from somewhere, and as we were 
on level ground. It wasn't a hard job. We just ripped and ripped and spread it all out. There were about a hundred of us. The people in McKinley have toilets, so there wasn't any stub. McKinley trash is good quality trash. Food, newspaper, a lot of plastic and glass. But the police wouldn't let us take anything because as far as they were concerned, we were looking for just one thing. Then someone found a handbag, and there was real excitement. Lots of shouting. It was blue and old with one stringy little handle, so it was thrown back. Everyone very disappointed, and the police just watched us work, looking grim, and their patience running out. By mid-afternoon, I guess, we'd finished, and I don't think a pile of rubbish had ever got a better look at. The men on the trash piles had finished as well, and everyone was ordered down. Of course, we all would have worked the, for the rest of the day and the rest of the week. We were hoping to string it out and get 500 out of it. But the police were smart and could see that even in a mountain of rubbish, you can pick through what's up top pretty fast and you can see what's new and what isn't. I saw the boxer policeman was back, the big guy who'd made the speech yesterday, and he was talking it all over with the site managers and two men in suits by one of the big black cars. There was a lot of arguing going on, a lot of calls being made, and I could see the managers weren't happy. I think because the line of loaded trucks was getting longer and longer and the drivers were finally getting itchy, drinking tea all day and not knowing when they were going home, and you could see what the problem was. If the police allowed these trucks to unload new, fresh trash, the precious bag was going to be buried even further down, if it was there. But on the other hand, this was the city dump site. And how long can you close down a dump when all these millions of people are sending stuff to it? How long before the city stops? But what must have been burning them up was that no one could be sure the bag had ever got here. After all, kids go through the trash straight out of the bins. In McKinley, same as anywhere. Sometimes you see them in the street sorting on the pavements. Also, like I said, kids get up inside the carts before they've even reached the dump so they can know the they could not know the bag had even got to the dump site. It was strange to think there were just three boys in the world who knew exactly where it was. We all sat around. Money got paid out at last, and everyone was 100 pesos richer. It was getting dark, the sky red all over, and the police finally gave up and started leaving, me and Raphael smiling. Then all the belts started with a sound that splits your ears, and the truck started crawling through again, and they brought out more lights and worked on and on, right through until the morning. In our little neighborhood, there were more cooking fires than usual, and a few cases of beer. There was music and singing, and everyone was happy, most of all Raphael, who thinks the job is done and he's been so smart. But inside Raphael's house, right by me, because I was staying close now, after the food, his auntie says to both of us, Are we safe? I knew she wasn't, and I also knew she'd brought it on herself. Opening her mouth had not been smart. In fact, I hate to say it, but we talked about it since. If she had kept her mouth shut, things would have been so much easier. Are we safe? She said again. I said, we are completely safe. Don't worry, which was a lie. I was spoken to, she said to me. They wanted to know why I said he found something. A policeman asked me about it again, and I shouldn't have spoken, but I did. Now they're wondering about both of you. They got both your names. Yes, but we told them, said Raphael, doing his smile and pushing back his hair. It was just a shoe, and they know nothing. She was quiet, but only for a moment. I saw you go out last night, she said, very soft, like you could hardly hear, so we were huddling close. I don't want to know where. I don't want to know why, but I just want to know we're safe. There's nothing in the house, is there? We both said, no. You promise me that? Because they will take these houses apart. I promise, said Raphael, so light and bright. All I could think about was the lies, stacking up now, and how I hoped it was worth it. The bag was safe down with Rat. I wanted to get away and check it. Raphael's auntie kept at him, though. They're talking about searching here, she said. That's what people say. Ours will be the first. You can bet on it. If they take it apart again, Raphael took her hand then. There's nothing in the house, he said. Ten thousand is a lot of money, she said, and her voice rose up. Have you thought what we could do with that? I interrupted then. You'd think they'd give it, I said. You really think they'd give it? I think they would, she said. Raphael shook her hand gently. Ma, he said. Ma, if someone here, one of us, if one of us got all that money, you think we'd be allowed to keep it for long? She reached out to me then and took hold of my arm, so we were all three linked together. You're smart, she said to me. 
Gardo, you're smarter than this boy, and I know you can run fast and get clear, and maybe I shouldn't have spoken, and I'm sorry I did, but I'm too old to move again, and the two little ones, her eyes were all full of tears, glittering wet, and I got scared because she was scared, and I know Raphael was most scared of all, though he won't ever say so. I don't want us getting caught up with the police, she said, gripping us hard. Everyone knows what things they do. I couldn't meet her eye. For one thing, I was mad she'd spoken up. It was still the dumbest thing she could have done. For another, I had a feeling things were going to get bad. Sure, I wanted to be smart, like she said I was, and I knew I had to lead this because Raphael needs to be led. I needed to keep a hold of him. I was planning it fast, and that's why I said nothing. We just had to get to the railway station, that's what I thought. We had to find out what was in the locker and do it fast. Then, maybe, in a few days' time, we could give up the wallet with the key inside it and get everyone off our backs. If that was too suspicious, I could get Rat to give it up. Nobody would suspect him because he worked alone. He didn't talk to people. So I thought, let Rat be the hero and bring them what they wanted in a few days' time. But if even that was too dangerous, I was thinking, then we could just throw the wallet and key up into the trash and wait until somebody, anybody, found it, if they ever did. There was nothing in the house, that was true. And nobody could prove anything, and we were not in danger. And we could still make money, that is what I told myself. And Raphael was thinking just the same kind of thing. And we talked it through all night, thinking we were being smart, and so not knowing what we were getting into. Not dealing with the fact that if the police think you've got something, they won't stop till they've got it from you.